Good morning, everyone. This is The Other Side of Midnight on 77 WABC. I'm Frank Morano. Well, you might not know it because uh, I don't think it's gotten nearly enough attention, but there's actually two gubernatorial elections this year, one right here in our area. That's right. There's a big election for governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, seeking re-election, and uh, the Republican that's uh, challenging him is former Assemblyman Jack Cittarelli, a man that knows New Jersey politics inside and out, has been uh, an observer and a participant for literally decades, is somebody that uh, I've come to regard as a pretty close friend. He's an Emmy award-winning anchor on PBS. He's the host of Lessons in Leadership and the author of the book, Lessons in Leadership. He's uh, also got a lot of other uh, lines on his resume, but we only have a four-hour show. We're not going to list them all. Gives me a great deal of pleasure. Welcome, Steve Adubato. Hello there, Steve. Uh, good to talk to you, my friend. Yes, A, we are close friends, and B, um, that introduction is exactly the way I wrote it, Mr. Morano. Uh, Thank you. Well, you know, you know, you know that I'm very capable of going the other way, too. So let's see how the <laughs> next few minutes of this interview goes, Steve. Uh, Steve you are in control, my friend. Uh, first, uh, let's get to the serious business first. Uh, Yankees, a big win over the Blue Jays last night. Uh, they seem to have a lot of momentum heading into the playoffs. I know you're a Yankee fan, but I know you're also capable of being objective. How do you see things going in the postseason this year? Frank, I'm actually not capable of being objective when it comes to the Yankees. When it comes to politics and Democrats and Republicans, totally objective. Well, there's a lot of but Trump he... people that say you're not capable of being objective when it comes to politics either. Well, they should listen to this segment. They can decide for themselves after that. Um, but I got to say this. The Yankees, five hits, five home runs. Um, yeah, if they're hitting home runs, uh, they're good. If they're not, they're in trouble. It's come down to two games. We uh, two more two is the magic number. If they get those two games in a combination of wins and losses from other people, they back into the playoffs, which is awesome. And um, I'm excited about the postseason. So it's going to be a big deal for Yankee fans. All right. So we're in the home stretch in terms of the political season this year as well. There's a few big local races in the New York area. Obviously, you got the mayor's race. But uh, the New, Jer- New Jersey gubernatorial election is something that uh, I know a lot of folks that follow everything that's been happening with the COVID pandemic. A lot of folks that are concerned about things like uh, property taxes and gas taxes. They've been following. They had a, a big debate uh, Governor Murphy and Jack Chitterelli last week, and it's been getting, actually this week, it's gotten pretty good reviews uh, from people who are supporters of both candidates. Most folks agree that it was a pretty good debate. Before we get to your conversation with both men and what you're doing this weekend, give me your take on the debate that we saw this week. Well, it was feisty. It was intense. The governor, even though he appears to be, Governor Murphy appears to be up nine, ten points or so, he came out swinging. He came after Jack Cittarelli on on his relationship with Donald Trump, which may not be a problem for your audience, Frank, but it is a problem in a very blue state like New Jersey. Um, and Cittarelli, rightfully so, came after the governor on 8,000 people who died in nursing homes after, you know, the governor made a very tough decision. I, in retrospect, I think it was the wrong decision to send people Uh, back into those nursing homes after they had COVID and without any guarantee that the nursing homes had, in fact, done what they needed to do to protect other patients and separate people and put them in different wings. And I pressed the governor in my interview and he was pressed in the debate as well. My opinion, he didn't own it. He doesn't own it. He doesn't take responsibility. He puts it on the nursing home. So it was substantive. It was feisty, as I said, always respectful. They don't think they like each other. But compared to what has gone on in presidential races and what went on after the presidential election, this was civil. So that's progress, Frank. Well, I'll certainly say so and uh, want to talk about what you're doing this weekend. But just in that debate, there were a couple of uh, interesting moments for, for me. Uh, one, Jack Cittarelli, the Republican, actually came out in support of driver's licenses for illegal aliens. That's not necessarily a, a stereotypical Republican issue. Um, Bill, uh, Phil Murphy came out in favor of not raising any more taxes mm-hmm. in his second term. Uh, Tell me what you think the significance of that was. And was there anything else in the debate that surprised you? Yeah. And Frankie, you picked up up on two really interesting points. I actually 
if they had a mulligan, you know, you know, I like to play golf and I'm not very good, but you get a mulligan, you know, on the first hole, you get a second shot, at least with the guys I play with. I think that those guys, if Murphy and Chitterelli could get a mulligan on this, I'm not convinced that that's the way they really wanted to say it. I'm not 100% convinced that Jack Chitterelli supports um, driver's license for, for illegal immigrants. I'm not 100% convinced that Phil Murphy is absolutely committed to not raising taxes again because there's no way to pay for Murphy's very progressive far left agenda. Um, not saying I disagree with it. I just, I'm fiscally pretty conservative, contrary to what some people might think. Um, our taxes are way too high. Our property taxes are too high. The big income tax, we're losing more and more people in the state of New Jersey who go to Florida for one day more than a half a year and we lose all that revenue. I'm not convinced that Murphy actually means what he's saying when he says he's not going to raise taxes because there's no way to pay for his agenda. Steve, Yeah, they said it. It's interesting and newsworthy. I'm not convinced it's real. Steve, trust me, anybody that knows or has any idea of how much money you make would not be the least bit surprised <laughs> that you're for lower taxes and uh, for fiscal conservatism. But uh, it was interesting. I only got to see a bit of the debate because my uh, brother-in-law is staying with us and he's in from California. So you kind of have to watch what he wants to watch. And, you know, they're all catching up. They're all talking and they can't really pay that much close attention to the debate. But one of the things I did notice is that there seemed to be a great deal more audience participation participation in this debate Mm -hmm. as opposed to other debates that I've seen. A lot of folks cheering for both candidates. Um, What role did that play in terms of the dynamics of this debate as far as you're concerned? Listen, the folks at uh, ABC, you know, WABC television, as opposed to 77 WABC, they had this whole thing about you can't applaud, you can't cheer, you can't boo. You're in New Jersey. Are you serious? (laughs) After COVID, the idea that people are just out in an event and, and engaged in a political debate where there's some excitement, you can't be serious telling people, don't just sit there with your hands folded. I mean, sit there with your mask on, but you got to be able to cheer and boo and do what you would do at a Yankee game. And to think that that wouldn't happen is absurd. And I also think it was respectful. And to Murphy and Chitterelli's credit, they at times, you know, asked the crowd to calm down to give the other, other person a chance to talk, to be respectful. But you got to be able to have some audience participation. I don't get the idea that people can't boo or cheer as long as they're respectful and allow the candidates to have their say. Otherwise, it's ridiculous. I do think it mattered. I think that it, it really brought some excitement to it. And both candidates played to their respective audience, which is absolutely fine. Did this debate move the needle at all? Do you think there was anyone that was either that was undecided and based on this debate made their decision for Murphy or Chitterelli? Or uh, if somebody was leaning towards Murphy, was there anything mm-hmm. in this debate that moved them towards Chitterelli or versa vice? You know, I actually, Frank, don't think it's the debate itself. And you've been around politics and analyze it better than most to know that it's what's said after. It's not only the spin of people in the campaigns, but it's it's your show. It's other uh, prominent shows that have good ratings. It's the TV commercials that take sound bites from a debate and use it. It's not the debate itself. Here's the thing. I think that if I'm going to be conservative in my judgment, I say 90 percent of the electorate has already decided who they're going to vote for. OK, so say Murphy is anywhere from eight to 10 points ahead. That means if it's 10 to say max 15 percent of the population that hasn't decided and who they're going to vote for. Chitterelli, in my view, has got to get 60, 70 percent of who's left in order to have a legitimate shot. And, and I really do believe otherwise people have made their decision. And by the way, there are a lot of people, Democrats, who are going to vote for Phil Murphy who don't even really know mm. much about his record. Mm. They're just Democrats, and that's what they're going to do. And Chitterelli may not have enough money, frankly, to get out there, not clearly not as much as Murphy, to be in as many TV spots as what how you know most people still vote in uh, in politics, whether it in on on television, on radio, and or in social media. Talking with Steve Adubato, Emmy Award winning anchor for PBS, author of the book Lessons of Le- Lessons in Leadership, also the host of the Lessons in Leadership podcast. You can check out his website at steveadubato.org. That's A D U B A T O. Steve, tell me what you've got going on this weekend. You have a sit down with both Governor Murphy and Jack Chitterelli. Uh, when is this? What is this? How can folks see this? Yeah, so PBS stations in the New Jersey and New York region. In New York, it's WNET. That'll be uh, Saturday morning at 8.30 on WNET. Um, also, on 
Saturday and Sunday morning, 8 and 8.30 back-to-back, you've got uh, on NJPBS, you've got those programs. See, what's interesting is that you've got Murphy the first week, and you've got Chitterelli the second week, and then we're going to rotate them throughout October. So there'll be four airings every Saturdays and Sundays. I know it sounds complicated, but if you look on our website, steveadovato.org, you'll see them there. We wanted to give each candidate their own separate half hour because, Frank, I'm into debates. I find them interesting and fun. But for me, I wanted to have an in-depth, issue-oriented discussion with each candidate. And I pressed Governor Murphy on the nursing homes. I pressed him on taxes. I pressed him on a lot of issues. And I pressed Jack Chitterelli on a whole range of issues as well and followed up when I didn't get a straight answer, which was more often than not, I did not get a straight answer. From Chitterelli or from both candidates? Both. I mean, again, I'll repeat myself on the nursing homes. I've been talking to you about this. Mm. You know, it, to me, it's a leadership thing. It's not so much political. I don't understand, Frank, why the governor, and I'll talk about Jack Chitterelli in a second. I don't get how you just can't say, you know something? This is what I knew at the time. This is what I thought at the time. We should not have sent those people who had COVID back into those nursing homes. It was a mistake. We should have guaranteed or the nursing homes had to guarantee that they could protect them. They didn't do it, and our Department of Health and other agencies didn't ensure that the nursing homes didn't do it. He won't say it. And to me, that's a leadership question. Admit that in retrospect, it was a mistake. I want to press them on that. Did not get a straight answer. Yes, I also wanted to press Jack Chitterelli on a simple question. You were at a so-called, quote, stop the steel rally, which some people in your audience may think that's fine. In New Jersey, it's not so fine. In other parts of the country, not so fine. With me, not so fine. And I'll tell you why. Because at that rally that he was at with Confederate flags, with the Stop the Steal, which to me is connected to January 6th, Jack Cirelli had the nerve to say he didn't know what he was going to. His picture and his name was on the brochure that went out. He was right there speaking with people who had Stop the Steal signs in front of him and Confederate flag. I asked him. He said he didn't see it. I don't buy it. He's too smart of a guy. Why didn't he just say, you know what? I was with Trump. I supported Trump. I wasn't convinced that Biden won the election. So I was at the rally. In retrospect, Biden's the president. That's what I did. And I stand for it. Right. He's sort of trying to have it both ways. Yeah. And the irony there is that uh, is that Chitterelli was always a never Trump Republican. And then he sort of geared in a more Trumpian direction in order to in order to win that primary. And now he's going to kind of own yeah. those pro-Trump positions. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, you alluded to a poll that shows uh, Chitterelli only nine points behind yep. Yep. Uh, Phil yep. Murphy. Is that race uh, uh, closer than you expected or about where you would expect? I think it's actually going to get closer. I really do. Um I think that those who are undecided, this is my view of New Jersey. If you're undecided, there's a decent chance you're an independent and you could go either way on this thing. If you were going to vote for Phil Murphy, wouldn't you know enough about his tax policies? But more importantly, I shouldn't say more importantly, but more pressing given the COVID crisis, how he handled it. Wouldn't you know if you wanted to vote for him or not? I've got to believe that the race is more like seven points. And that's why I'm saying if Chitterelli can win a high percentage of those undecided voters, this thing could go down to the wire. And I'm not just saying that to create a race like the Yankees have a legitimate playoff run here, like fake excitement. This is I think this is a real race. It's around seven or eight points right now. And that's why the governor is spending every penny he has. And he has a lot of them. Um, He is spending a ton of money on this race. And truthfully, Frank. I'm convinced that Phil Murphy has convinced himself that if he wins this race, he wants to run for president. I, I have There's no other doubt. Governors that, in New Jersey have done the same thing, and it hasn't worked out so well. I, I, um, but I think he thinks that. I, I don't think there's anything New Jersey deserves more than a uh, Chris Christie versus Phil Murphy race for the presidency in 2024. <laughs> uh, you alluded to Murphy and uh, rising, raising taxes in his first term and the possibility of a tax increase in his next term. What are the other key pitfalls in terms of issues for him? Clearly, the, the cost of living is one. Uh, I hear a lot about the vaccine mandates, the mask mandates for children as young as two in New Jersey schools. Is that something that's going to have any sort of an electoral impact or is it just that the people that are very gung ho about that stuff tend to be more vocal? Hmm. Well, first of all, we have an 11 year old daughter who's in the sixth grade. And look, do I love the fact 
that she has to carry a uh, it's a plastic shield that she she puts up in front of her desk every day. No, but I know it helps on some level. Do I love the fact that she's wearing a mask and the kids have to wear it all day and sometimes they can't see each other's faces or actually hear each other very well? No, I don't love it. But you know what? Safety first. Now, I don't think I'm the exception because in most of the polls, Frank, in New Jersey, most parents, most voters believe in the mask mandate, believe in mandatory vaccines. Now, there have got to be some exceptions for some people in certain circumstances. But at the same time, I don't think that hurts Murphy. I, however, the two-year-old thing, it's not, it, that's not making sense to me. I don't understand logically from a practical point of view how the two-year-old in a pre-K, excuse me, in a, in a, in a daycare program keeps that mask on. I, they can't believe the pressure they're putting on child care workers to make sure that happens. I don't know if it hurts him politically. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I, believe me, I'm a big mask guy. I'm a big vaccine mandate guy. That part just does not only goes too far, it does, it's not practical. Yeah, talking with Steve Adubato, you could see him interviewing both uh, Governor Phil Murphy and his uh, challenger, Jack Cittarelli, this weekend uh, on PBS. And you could just check steveadubato.org to see all the times that it's going to be replayed. You know, I I have followed New Jersey politics, not nearly as closely as you have, but uh, I'm much more of an expert, I guess you'd say, in New York politics. So I always look at New Jersey. You are an expert. Well, I, 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 I always look at New Jersey politics with great interest, but I don't pretend to have your level of expertise. Expertise. That's why when someone asked me this question recently, I said I would ask you because you're probably the person that I know personally that knows most about New Jersey politics out of anybody. And someone said a New Jersey voter that they had revealed that they had unveiled the times and the dates for early voting in New York. But uh, excuse me, in New Jersey, but not hmm. the locations. Why would the locations what? still be to be determined, but not the dates or the times. Frank, you have stumped me. I mean, usually you stump me with a Godfather question. <laughs> you stump me right here because I would think that you would have to know the locations. Now, I guess the county, the state, and the state attorney general's office. Excuse me, the secretary of state's office runs the elections along with the county clerks. Okay, so it's October the first. The election is November the second. You got to tell people in the next week or so. I mean, I've got it's only logical. I don't. I'm not going to say I'm an expert on that, but if that's actually true, it's it's not making sense more than another week or so. You got to tell people where they can early vote. I, I know you're going to speak with my uh, my colleague Dominic Carter tomorrow night. If you find the answer in the next 24 hours, maybe you could let Dominic know and uh, he'll share it with our audience. I would be glad to do that. And uh, two great hosts on 77 WABC. And uh, you are a Newark guy. Your family has long roots in Newark, especially your Born dad, who's unfortunately no longer with us. What is your take on the many saints of Newark? Are you excited about it? Are you uh, going to see it reluctantly? Are you uh, open-minded? What's your take on the Sopranos prequel when it comes out? Frank, I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm looking forward to it. Um, born and raised, as I said, in Newark, New Jersey. Um, I will tell you, I've also interviewed many of the uh, actors connected to The Sopranos over the years. I'm not one of the Italian as well. I'm incredibly proud of my heritage and that my grandparents came here from Italy back in uh, 1919, 1920. I will say this. I'm not one of those Italian Americans who believes that The Sopranos hurts, quote unquote, our people. Um, I do appreciate that it's art, it's film, it's TV, it's a you know movie that we're talking about right now. It's entertainment, and that's the way I look at it. I'm pumped and ready to. Uh, I'm not going to go to the movies, but I'm going to sit home and watch it when it comes out with my mom, who's uh, I think she's going to be up late tonight listening to you anyway. But my mom, Fran Abato in Newark, and uh, she's looking forward to it as well. Well, uh, Fran is uh, one of the few people that knows more about The Godfather than the two of us combined. So if, uh, <laughs> if she's listening, then we're in a good position. Steve, uh, thanks very much for the time this morning. I know we kept you up pay- past your bedtime. I'll be watching uh, the special on PBS this weekend. I hope all of our listeners do, too. And uh, we'll certainly be listening to you with Dominic tomorrow as well. As always, Frank, it's my honor and pleasure to be with my friend. All the best, Frank. Hey, thank you, Steve. Steve Adubato, if you want to comment on any portion of our conversation, you're welcome to give me a call. 1-800-848-WABC. That's 1-800-848-9222. This is The Other Side of Midnight. Straight ahead.